Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update. I hope you guys are doing great and I really expected that I would be feeling much better this morning but unfortunately that's not the case. But uh, nevertheless, let's go ahead and get straight into what is happening. So sorry about sounding a bit droopy in this update. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. Alright, so as we look at this uh, map here we can see that we've got our six systems out there. We've got Idalia, which is now a post-tropical cyclone and has prompted a tropical storm watch in Bermuda. There is also Hurricane Franklin, which is making its way further to the northeast. And uh, as it moves over cooler waters, it will continue to weaken and eventually dissipate. To the southeast of Franklin, we've got Jose. And uh, Jose actually strengthened a bit. And then we've got the remnants of Gert with a high chance of development in those two disturbances. So let's go on to our tropical cyclones first, and then we'll be moving to our disturbances. All right, so we're starting out with Idalia. So Idalia is a post-tropical cyclone but it should regain its tropical characteristics and uh, eventually become a tropical storm as we're going to be heading into sometime tomorrow and uh, there we see Bermuda which is highlighted in yellow so again there's that tropical storm watch which means that tropical storm conditions are possible within 48 hours and then eventually uh, Italia wants to make her way up to the northeast and then make a turn to the northwest as a post tropical cyclone so uh, in terms of parts of Atlantic Canada, you want to be on the lookout for this and uh, even for northeastern states. Let's see what Let's see what Dahlia is going to be doing as we head into next week. And then as we move on to uh, Franklin, here we have the cyclone. It is slowly weakening. Winds are 85 miles per hour. And it is moving to the east-northeast at 15 miles per hour. And so uh, it should become post-tropical as we head into tomorrow, but not before absorbing Jose. So going on to Jose now, there we have maximum winds of 60 miles per hour and it is moving to the north at 13 miles per hour and then uh, we've got quite a bit of these systems in close proximity there we have the remnants of GERD which might redevelop uh, it's getting better organized out there there are more thunderstorms and so uh, now given a 70% chance to develop and yesterday uh, I believe there was a medium chance of seeing development so now that chance has arisen and we could see the remnants uh, the remnants redevelop and in that case they would acquire the name GERT again because it's not a brand new system that we're talking about. It's an old one that is just trying to be relevant basically. Let's go on to the next disturbance 94L. So this one now has a high 90% chance of development. We could see it become a brief tropical depression or tropical storm maybe sometime today or tomorrow and uh, the next name to be used for the season is Katia. So let's see if this will manage to become Katia. And then what could be Lee might develop within this region here. So we've got this highlighted spot now with a 40% chance of seeing development. So uh, we don't have an area marked just yet. That's because the low pressure area has not yet developed. But pretty much all models are expecting that this will develop, that we, we're going to see development take place. And they want to take the system a bit closer to the Caribbean. So we're going to be taking a look at what they have to show. But now we're going on to the satellite imagery and here we can see it. So what is left of Italia is in that area there you can see that broad area of activity we've also got Franklin there is the remnants of Gert and also Jose and uh, as we take a look off the coast of Africa we see all those showers and thunderstorms associated with 94 L let's zoom into the Caribbean here and we can see that uh, we've got these showers and thunderstorms moving in parts of Barbados and other southeastern islands the windward islands uh, that is in association with a tropical wave even for Trinidad and Tobago there might be a bit of rainfall activity today and there may be times when uh, the rainfall gets a bit heavy for a couple of minutes or so uh, because we're not talking about something that is organized. So these little clusters of convection can come with some of those heavy showers or heavy downpours at times. ABC Islands in the clear remain in dry. Same thing down in the Guyanas, uh, Guyana, Suriname, French Guiana. As we head further up north into the rest of the Lesser Antilles, not seeing much happening either. Let's go on a bit further to the west. And here we can see that uh, there's still a lot of moisture over in the vicinity of Central America and there's a tropical wave that is exiting as well so that is helping to enhance the rainfall activity over there and then 
in the vicinity of the Cayman Islands and Jamaica. Even for Haiti as well, there is some activity taking place. All right, and so now we're going on to what models have to show in, in terms of skin development in that area highlighted uh, at the main development region, that orange area. So first we're looking at GFS. And yesterday, GFS was expecting that we would see something make its way into the Caribbean through Jamaica as a tropical storm. Now let's see what, is, well, what it has to show. So this is as we head to Saturday of next week, the 9th of the month. And it is also showing that something else will be moving off and developing out there. But as for that uh, system, the, the model is showing it approaching the Caribbean as a hurricane, potentially a Cat 1, a strong Cat 1 or a Cat 2 hurricane as we head to the 11th on monday monday the 11th uh, the 11th of september it has it that this will be making its uh, way up to the northwest crossing through the dominican republic potentially as a hurricane we see a pressure of 987 millibars there's that other system out there and then eventually continuing up the bahamas and strengthening there we have the pressure decreasing to 974 millibars and then it eventually makes its way out and then as we head on to the euro model now euro is showing something a little bit closer to the caribbean as well compared to previous runs so this is tuesday the 5th of september and then by friday which is next friday we see some strengthening taking place in a bit of a west northwest road track until the system eventually moves uh, well north of the eastern caribbean there we see a pressure of 938 millibars a major hurricane expected here by euro and then the icon model is also showing that we will see development and it is also taking the system quite close to the caribbean there we see that by friday it is expected to have a pressure of 953 millibars so in all all these models are calling for a hurricane and uh it could make its way to the caribbean it could be close enough to the caribbean to impact some areas or it could stay out of the caribbean so i would say for the northeastern islands especially the bahamas the east coast of the u.s you want to keep an eye out but the good news is that this is some time out from now so we've got a lot of time to watch what is happening what the trends are and uh, of course i'm here to keep you guys posted so that you're never caught up off guard with these systems and so uh, that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you in this update so again we've got our three active tropical cyclones out there idalia franklin and jose and we could see gert redeveloping out there as well and uh, it's likely that we might see a new tropical depression or tropical storm coming from invest 94l as we head into this weekend and eventually into next week the main development region gets pretty active as we might have a tropical cyclone with some uncertainty in terms of where it'll go but as i said all the models are calling for a hurricane and we're in that time of year now september when uh, things will start to go downhill very quickly and we'll start to see lots of development take place, especially with uh, the anomalously warm temperatures out there. Uh, those will be fueling all these systems as they try to develop. And so I hope you found this video to be quite informative, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be with the wise.